Forget what your neighbor with a Tesla says, there's really no such thing as a self-driving car. That was true up until about a year ago, and if I'm being completely honest, it's still true. It's just, now it's changed from a complete no to a sorta. Admittedly a loaded statement, but that brings us to an important definition that you and I have to determine. And that is, what is a self-driving car? And that, depending on who you are, varies. Like the folks who drive Teslas, they feel that they have a self-driving car. At least today they're paying $15,000 for a beta that will theoretically drive the car, mimic what is defined as self-driving, at least to the Society of Automotive Engineers. They have come up with five levels of autonomous driving. Basic start at things like the cruise control system that will keep a distance between you and the car in front of you, and then all the way up to level five where it is completely driving from your garage to your office. And this is where we stumble upon a gray area between those bookends, and that's defined as either level two or level three autonomy, which brings us to what is level two autonomy? That's something you and I have experienced many times where the car will drive itself in the lane. So it stays in the lane, keeps the distance between you and the car in front of it. And then in very fancy systems, like in a Mercedes or a BMW, it'll change the lanes when you hit the turn signal. That's level two. Level three autonomy, that's kind of the future. No one has gotten to that point, at least yet. And what that is, where the car will drive itself, where you take your hands off the wheel, not for 30 seconds to a minute at a time, like level two systems, this is where you are literally looking forward, you can be looking at the screen, you don't have to have your hands on the wheel or really interacting with the car, you just have to be alert to take over when the car hands the driving back to you. That is defined as level three, and what we have here is a car that now is legally able to be sold as level three autonomy. So the closest thing to a self-driving car in Germany for the past year, but now California and Nevada. And that brings us to the technical point of our discussion. How do they make a level two car become level three? Well, they add a couple of bits more hardware and they change some of the software. But that brings us to the question, which cars have the level three autonomous system that's been blessed by the US government, at least the California government and Nevada governments in the US. And that would be the EQS as well as the S-Class. And here we have to go back to some of the bits we've seen in level two cars, systems like radar sensors. They sit behind the star in this case, as well as in the S-Class. The integration's a bit better on the S-Class, if you ask me. This, they have these two things on the side, which really aren't these. Then they have the stereoscopic cameras that sit up here, and I've brought more show and tell for you guys. This kind of looks like a robot. Remember uh, Johnny Five from Short Circuit, if you remember that old movie? Now, working in conjunction with all of that is a moisture sensor that sits in the back of the front left wheel well. Why is that there? Well, this system, it's kind of like a new driver. It would like beautiful sunshiny days. It would like a lot of visibility. So it does not work when it's raining. It doesn't work when it's dark. It doesn't work in say a construction zone. There's some other parameters we'll discuss a little bit later in the episode. Now, of course, there are some changes on the arse end of the car as well. The most noticeable is the GPS antenna, significantly larger than the GPS antenna in other EQSs and S-classes that have level two autonomy. Then there is a camera in the rear of the car in both EQS and the S-class to see the traffic behind you. Basically, there's a lot of inputs of data into the hardware and software, and then there are more sensors in the rear of the car. Now, there are other changes that you really don't see. This is kind of like an airplane in that there are a number of redundant systems, like there are two uh, magnetos in every kind of airplane. This has backups for the steering, for the braking, the power control systems. Now, if I'm personally reading the tea leaves correctly, that's probably the biggest difference between level two and level three autonomous systems. There is a change that's in the works that is not part of this system. Uh, basically, Mercedes as well as other car manufacturers that's working on level three autonomy, they wanna be able to broadcast out to traffic that, hey, this car is operating under level three autonomy, so how do you do that? And one of the ideas that's percolating, it's actually more than an idea, it's a proposal, is having turquoise lights 
that are around the entire vehicle. There's a great example of one that they showed us on this drive where it's in the front and rear of the vehicle as well as on the mirrors. That is not yet part of level three autonomy. It's just a proposal and something being worked out with the Society of Automotive Engineers. Now, of course, there are probably some other technical changes, but those are the highlights. Now, before you and I jump behind the wheel and not, Drive this car a favor. If you get value out of these episodes, share them, click the like button, subscribe. Arigato gozaimasu. Okay, so this is one of the few instances where you and I need to go seek out some traffic in order to get this system to work because this system is designed to work in traffic. So to accommodate that, it is 4.45 on a Wednesday afternoon. We're on the 10 going east. Now, a couple of parameters. Number one, we need a lead car in front of us. Uh, number two, we can't be going above 40 miles an hour. This is designed to be in traffic and low speed situations. So I'm actually going too fast right now, believe it or not. So let's go below 40 miles an hour. Now this system, a couple of things going on. Number one, it's not like the level two system I've demonstrated in other episodes where it can change lanes. This is designed to stay in one lane. Number two, this is designed to work under certain parameters. During the day, uh, not when it's raining, no emergency vehicles around us, no cyclists, meaning bicycles, or pedestrians on a freeway. So I know that sounds strange. Why would there be a pedestrian or a cyclist on a freeway? The system does take into account those eventualities. Now let's actually get out of the system, get away from this truck so we can see a bit farther in front of us. And you can see we have definitely found traffic. Okay, so as we get deep into this traffic, a couple of things going on here. Oh, some interesting side note about the motorcycles that just went past us. Number one, that was California Highway Patrol. But number two, those of you that know California, you can legally lane split here. The engineers have kind of done the calculus here, and in most cases, people split lanes between the fast lane and the lane next to it. So what they've done is they said, okay, you know what, let's put the car closer to the left side of the left lane in those cases, but let's keep it in the center in other lanes, but it can see motorcycles coming up behind you with that camera in the back that we've talked about. And of course, we arrive at the most obvious of questions. How much is all this future tech going to cost us? And there, something unexpected, both in how much it is and how it is priced. Uh, if one were to look at the current beta for Tesla, it's about 15 grand, I'm sure. The Tesla folks will be happy to correct me in the comments below. But this, it's only gonna be sold on a subscription. The first year is $2,500. That includes the map updates, as well as the hardware. But there, a bit of an asterisk as well. I spoke to the folks at Mercedes, and I said, well, do you have to pay extra for the hardware over like a basic S-Class or EQS? And there, they were like, well, we're gonna have a limited number of these cars in 2023, a couple of more in 2024. They don't really specify whether you can roll into a dealer and say, I want this car with this level three autonomy. So if I'm really being my New York pedantic self here, you're really not paying extra between a level two and a level three autonomous S-Class or EQS. You're just paying for the subscription. This is a grand experiment for them and they're limiting supply so they get some learning under their belt in terms of everything from cost, how much people will pay, as well as liability, which gets us to another really interesting point about pricing. They were very upfront and said, there will be more pricing options down the road. So by the time someone gets to the point of renewing, there will probably be multi-year options as well as maybe monthly options if I'm taking a guess here. This thing is looking at me when I'm driving. In other words, it's looking at where my eyes are. So there's a couple of parameters that are baked into it. Number one, I can't be sleeping. So the car will switch off, the system will switch off and come to a controlled stop. And there's another one. And just as a side note, when it comes to accidents that are caused by motorcycles that lane split, you are immediately at fault if you are the one late splitting. Anyway, back to some of the changes here. Uh, so this thing is looking for my eyes and it can see through my sunglasses whether they're polarized or not polarized like these. And once again, is it trying to get me to take over? No, it's stopped. It's still on. So the whole point, I think we kind of proved the point, this is a stop and go traffic jam assist system. 
and I don't necessarily need to have my hands on the wheel. As a matter of fact, I don't really need to pay attention even though it's looking at my eyes. So I can't recline the seats because it'll switch off the system. I can't be looking over here because it'll switch off the system. However, I can watch video. So I can go into the apps here and there is a YouTube app and we are shooting this on September 20th and just by happenstance the episode that premiered today this Wednesday is the Mercedes-Benz S580 yeah, yeah. plug-in episode and yes the S63 is the most complex car they make but it is fantastic okay so it knows that I'm looking at the screen here actually I'm gonna tell myself to shut up here but it still stays in the drive pilot assist. So it still is in level three autonomy, even though I'm focusing on this. The one thing I can't do, I can't pull my phone out and start texting with my phone or looking at different apps on my phone, because what's gonna happen is I'm creating a barrier between the sensor in the instrument panel that's looking for my eyes. And at some point, there it is, it's saying, ah, you better be prepared to take control of the vehicle. And all of a sudden, look what happens. The seat belt's going to start shaking, call it a massage of sorts, and then it starts to get louder and louder and more frequent with the interrupt. Now it's stopped, puts on the hazard lights, and then I can hit the button here and then take control of the vehicle. This is one of these very few instances where we don't know what we don't know, meaning the technology is way out over the skis, or I should say way out over the legal skis. And that's really what's holding this back. Mercedes-Benz is the test case of creating new case law as it relates to vehicular accidents or issues between two parties where one might technically not be the driver. Okay, now it's telling me to take over because I'm off a map digitized highway. So this is a fascinating instance where it's not really about the technology, it's the combination of the technology and the future case law to come. Because it's very rare we have instances like this, but now we're facing it with autonomous driving, AI, and biological sciences all around the same time. Okay, so now let's bring these two disparate concepts together, the technology and the law. Let's start with the technology. This, it works. You saw in ridiculously heavy traffic, the system performed well. It understood situations where I needed to control the car. This was more an instance where I need to understand it more than it needs to understand me. I'm still not to the point where I'd want to watch videos, even with the car controlling the driving but I'm certain many folks will absolutely look forward to that day. I am not one of them. And that brings us to more of the law part of it. And I would argue that's really what's holding up more proliferation of level three autonomy. We don't know what we don't know. And the reality of the situation is companies like Mercedes, they are on the bleeding edge here and they're the ones that are gonna to have to take all the learning and either share it within their disparate brands or they're gonna to have to share it with the rest of the industry. And something tells me that they are because they've worked with society of automotive engineers to bring systems like this together and have different standards. And that brings us to the wish list. And here, the wish list is not really for Mercedes. The wish list is for governments and companies like Mercedes. Can we come up with standards of the law as it applies to self-driving cars? Because something tells me this could be a complete quagmire and clog the courts. It's not like in Germany where it was a lot easier for them to bring this out because I don't want to sound harsh here, but European courts, they put a value on arms and limbs and things like this. In America, we sue the crap out of each other. So perhaps we could have more continuity in laws, especially when it comes to level three autonomy. So it can become more of a growing concern. But I am just one man, and this is the point of the episode that I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV Onward, Moto Man TV Onward, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, if you found this episode fascinating, I would highly suggest you check out my episode when we first tested the system, but it wasn't on a public road. It was on a closed circuit at the Mercedes Proving Grounds. And there, it wasn't just a car we had. Granted, it was a prettier one than this. It was an S-Class. I had the engineer of the system in the car with me 
and they threw all these ridiculous scenarios at it, like an ambulance, a police car, a semi, and many other things, like ridiculous traffic jams where people like stop short in front of me. Uh, you can click on that episode here until I see you in the next episode. Bis später.